Hi, my name is Melissa Turner, I'm principal at Prestonsburg Elementary. I'm here with um, my two assistant principals, Mr. Brandon Maynard and Mr. Brent Hall. We are sharing today about our pathway to personalized learning. Um, and as you can see, our problem of practice uh, at Prestonsburg Elementary is to um, design a system of learning that provides opportunity for every student to learn individually at their own pace at their own place and so that each student at PES will grow and um, be successful each year. As you see here, we have our uh, theory of action and um, we have some structures in place that, uh, that will help us uh, to reach our goals. Uh, so that, you know, we have what our teachers are gonna do and how they're going to uh, address individualized learning for each child through small groups. And uh, we're gonna be looking at PLCs and uh, data-driven decisions. And uh, we have the support of our district um, with uh, uh, several district-wide programs that we use. And we also have, um, a program called Core 4 that we are implementing. Um, and if you look, our plan of action involves the Core 4, and it's, it's a program that uh, has four main targeted areas that, um, that we will focus on. We've got flexible content and tools, targeted instruction, student reflection and ownership, and data-driven decisions. Our focus area this year has been targeted instruction with personalized learning and small group learning, student choices, and um, our teachers have really bought into this and, uh, and that's been going really well. Um, with, uh, with our problem of practice, we have implemented Orton-Gillingham um, as a, a targeted instruction strategy for uh, reading and phonics. Um, and then we're also utilizing Lexia um, along with other resources in the classroom, online and hands-on resources to uh, meet individual student needs so that they can grow at their own pace. And we're also uh, implementing a lot of STEM and STEAM opportunities for our students with a, a new STEM lab or learning lab that we're opening up so that uh, all students in our school can have access to STEM and STEAM activities. One of the main reasons that we, we tried to, to focus on personalized learning is that we wanted to make sure that we created a good environment to promote growth to all students. You know, as you come in, a, a first grade or second grade student might not be on grade level, fifth grade student might not be on grade level. So we really wanted to focus on targeting instruction so we can meet kids where they are, so we can promote growth, whether a kid's above grade level, on grade level, or below grade level. And by doing this, this is going to increase student engagement and provide students with an opportunity to, su to, su to succeed. Um, we done this in a lot of different ways by providing choices uh, for students of the activities that they needed to complete, uh, which helped provide ownership and buy-in from the students um, to help them grow as they, they felt that they, they had a, a, a say in their education and how it was being, being carried out, which led us into our goals um, that we had. You know, we wanted to provide an environment to where all students could grow. Um, whether or not they're, like I said, they were above grade level, below grade level, or, or on grade level. And in the short term, we focused on that targeted instruction so we could personalize each individual kid's learning to meet those kids where they are. And that's what our, uh, what our teachers have bought into have been doing a great job of. When you consider the impact that our plan has had, um, it takes various various ways that you wouldn't typically see with the traditional approach. We, we've seen a lot of kids who, you know, normally they, they weren't really engaged because the lesson didn't interest them. The, the lesson was taught one way, they didn't have a variety. As Mr. Hall said, we've incorporated choice. It's not only choice as in what the child is interested in, but choice as in the way that the child will be assessed. I may be assessed um, using a digital platform, I may be assessed on paper, uh, there may be a verbal type of assessment. It's whatever type of assessment appeals to the child and displays their knowledge in the best possible way. Uh, we've seen classrooms where they were complete a variety of assessments and then choose the one in which, hey, I did best on this, so this is the grade I want. And that was perfectly fine, they had that voice. That's a big part of personalized learning is the students having a voice in what they're doing, when they're doing it, 
how they're completing it and having more than one option. Um, another great thing that we've seen with the Orton Gillingham, Orton Gillingham is a multi-sensory approach. We see kids that were typically not as engaged, more engaged because we're, we're appealing to those senses, we're, they're tactile experiences and it makes that lesson more concrete and the kids grasp it better. We're seeing a, a stronger phonics base, more phonemic awareness, and uh, it's increasing students' ability to read to decode words. We're, we're getting stronger students. We're seeing that growth across all grade levels. We have fourth grade, fifth grade, third grade, that maybe they had to back up and work on some early phonics skills or some type of phonemic awareness. And those students now through the implementation of this program and personalized learning with step reflection and monitoring their progress and those data-driven decisions, we're getting high yields of growth and seeing our students perform at levels where they had never performed before. The evidence of our implementation it, it's seen daily. It's seen in our walkthrough observations, uh, in the students' levels of achievement, uh, grades increasing, just in, engagements increasing. We see a, a lot more on-task behaviors than we had seen before. I would honestly say that this is, well, most all would agree that it's really improved behavior because Students are having that voice, they're having that choice, but your issues within the classroom itself. So an another way that we have uh, implemented our um, targeted instruction is uh, through our PLCs. We, we've really analyzed um, student data through our PLCs, um, through grade level PLCs and uh, also school-wide PLCs. Uh, we have used um, different tracking systems to keep up with how students are doing and look at individual strengths and weaknesses uh, so that we can plan our instruction that so that it meets the needs of every every child. Um, we have uh, weekly PLCs where teachers get together and, um, you know, we'll, we have a, a schedule where we use um, uh, one week we'll do the um, data analysis and then another week we'll look at instructional strategies uh, to help us reach the needs of the children. Um, and then we also have a school-wide data day where we uh, analyze school-wide data as, a, as an entire staff. Um, and that kind of guides our instruction for the year. Um, and, uh, and then the weekly PLCs continue to, to do so throughout the year. And it's been great to see our teacher step outside the box. It, this is a branch from the traditional approach to learning, to teaching. They've had to step outside of their comfort zone. Uh, there's been a lot of training take, taking place to help teachers understand how to best meet the needs of our students all in one setting. Everybody's not getting the same thing at the same time. There's various activities taking place, but it's not just activities for the sake of having stations or centers. They are learning centers that are with purpose. Each one is designed for specific needs of different groups of students. There's yeah. all types of learning taking place at once. And that's been a change for our teachers, but we're seeing that shift in learning. We're seeing that shift across our building in the classrooms. And uh, that's an accomplishment. And I think that's why the, the targeted, you know, PLCs with data analysis are so important too is because each kid is going to have a different set of data laid out. And if we don't look at each kid's data, we're never going to be able to personalize that learning. So that, that's a key step in, in the process. All right, so the, the future steps that we plan to take, um, we are, um, as, as much as we have made some progress with the targeted instruction, we want to keep our focus on that targeted instruction, but we also want to, um, to start, you know, making sure that we're looking at the other three elements of uh, personalized learning. Um, but we want to put our emphasis on student reflection and, and ownership, and we want to continue with that as well. Um, we want to continue the Orton-Gillingham uh, and the Lexia and um, 
we want to continue those um, analyzing our data to make sure that we have um, that we know where we our students are, we know what they need, and we so that we can meet their needs. Um, we are um, we'll use our benchmark data and our um, K prep data, which um, you know next year may look a little different, but we'll we'll use the data that we have. Uh, to the best of our ability to, so that we can uh, gauge our students and analyze how they're doing throughout the year. Um, we plan to uh, implement all four components of the core four um, with time, but we want to make sure that we are, um, that we have mastered each one of those before we move forward. Um, so our future sets are to continue what we're doing and uh, we, we like what we're doing. We like what's, uh, what's happening in our school. We like what, uh, our kids are doing and then success that we're seeing and the growth that we're seeing school-wide. So we, we hope to continue that and in, um, in, into the future, into next year. And, um, and so that it becomes an integrated part of our instruction um, on a day-to-day -day basis across the school. You know, if you need to find us, this is where you can find us and you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter at uh, PES Black Cats.